In this video, we will discuss chamfer machining, how to create a toolpath, as well as how to create the feature associated with that toolpath. This is available in both SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS. So we've opened the part and you'll notice that there's a chamfer here on the inside profile. What we're going to do is we're going to add the feature into the feature tree, and then we're going to add the toolpath associated to that feature. So the first thing that we want to do is we'll switch over into our SOLIDWORKS CAM tab in the command manager. Our machine, the stock, and the coordinate system have all been set up prior to this. So we're going to go ahead and add in our setup. So we can right click on the coordinate system and add in our mill part setup or click on the setup from the command manager at the top. So we'll choose mill part setup. And I'm just going to place this on this top surface so that my arrow is pointing in the correct direction that my tools are coming in. We'll choose OK. And then I want to go ahead and add that feature in. So anytime I'm looking at an interior profile, that's going to be a pocket feature. So if it's a closed interior profile, that's going to be a pocket. If I was creating a chamfer on the outside profile of this feature, that would be a boss feature. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on mill part setup one, and we'll add in our new two and a half axis feature. So once I'm in the feature manager, I can go ahead and create my feature. So this is going to be a pocket from the feature type drop down. And then with my selections, what I want to do is select the top edge of the chamfer. So if I've modeled the chamfer into the parts, I want to select this top edge. So you'll notice that I have open chain selected on my edge selection. I'm going to change that to convert to loop. And then when I select the top edge of this chamfer, it should loop all the way around. So you can see I've got my loop selected and it's highlighted in blue. We'll go ahead and choose my end condition tab. And the end condition here is going to be past the bottom of the chamfer itself. So if I want the tip of the tool to go past that edge, I need to make sure that this end condition is longer than the actual tip of the tool. So I'm going to go ahead and type in a quarter inch. And we can see that that's longer than my chamfer. The strategy here hasn't been set yet. We haven't created a chamfer strategy, so I'm going to go ahead and choose fine. But when we create this chamfer, I can save my strategy back. And then in the future, I'll be able to choose my chamfer strategy. So I'll choose the fine strategy to give me my contour melt tool path. I'll choose OK. And now I've got my Auburn pocket here. So we'll go ahead and generate the operation plan. So I'm right clicking and choosing generate operation plan. And now I've got my tool path. Now, before I generate the tool path, I need to make some changes to this tool path. So I'm going to right click and choose edit definition. Inside the operation parameters, the first thing that I always want to do when I'm creating this tool path is to choose the tool that I want to use to cut this. So I'm going to switch over into my tool crib tab, and then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and you'll see that I've got this countersink tool in here. So this is a three quarter inch, 90 degree countersink. I'm going to go ahead and select that tool. And yes, I want to use the corresponding holder. And now I've got my countersink tool in here. So that's what I'm going to use to cut this chamfer. I'm going to switch over into my contour tab and you'll see that I've got a chamfer section in this tab. I'm going to turn on chamfer machining. And what I want to do is fill out any information that I need to create the actual chamfer tool path. So you'll notice that the angle is grayed out. That is coming directly from the tool. So that's one of the reasons we want to select the tool before we start filling this information out. So the angle is 45 degrees based on the 90 degree tool. Then I've got my length. So what is the actual length of that chamfer? This is an eighth inch chamfer. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. Then I've got my clearance setting. So that's how far I want the tip of the tool to go past the edge, the bottom edge of that chamfer. So I'm going to set this to 0.1. And then we've got the last drop down here, and that's your feature edge. So depending on whether you've modeled the actual chamfer into the CAD model, so that's what we've got here. We selected that top edge. We're going to choose outer edge if it's modeled into the part. So you can see the edge selection here. And this is why we select the top edge when creating a chamfer feature. The other option in here is the apex option. And this is basically if you're creating a chamfer on a feature that is not modeled into the part. So if it's just a square edge, 
we can easily select the Apex option. Once we've got that, we can go ahead and press the Preview button and we should automatically get our Chamfer tool path. I'm going to go ahead and simulate this with my step through simulation and we can see this play through. Another quick note with the length and the clearance, if you type something in, say for example, two inches, that's longer than the actual end condition depth that we created for our feature, this isn't going to let us use this. So if we press preview, you'll see this little message that pops up and it says the resultant chamfer length will be zero for the current combination of tool diameter, chamfer length, and clearance. So please modify either the tool diameter, chamfer length, or clearance. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to tell you 0.13 is the largest clearance size that I can use with the length that I've got submitted here based on, again, the actual feature length. So if both of these are an eighth of an inch and my feature depth that I created in my end condition is a quarter inch, that's the largest amount that I can go to. So I'm going to leave this at 0.1. And again, I want to make sure this is on outer edge. Now when I simulate, I can just use my simulate here and press play. And this is going to show me my chamfer. If I'm happy with that chamfer, again, I can save that as a strategy. So I can come back into my feature tree, right click on the feature type, and save the operation plan.